Hello gorgeous peeps, I'm Chris from Techspert and today we're going to be checking out the Redmi Note 11 Pro 5G. I know I've banged on about this before but can we please just drop the whole 5G thing from the end? These four names are already bloody long enough as it is. But anyway this is an even bigger version of the standard Redmi Note 11 which we've covered previously here on Techspert, boasting even sexier specs. So you've got a whopper of a 6.67 inch AMOLED display here. The performance has been boosted with a Snapdragon 695 chipset. You've got faster wired charging 67 watts here. And you've also got an upgraded 108 megapixel Samsung HM2 camera sensor. And that's just a handful of the improvements on the Redmi Note 11 Pro versus the standard Note 11. So what I'm going to do now is whip the Pro out of its box, take you on a full on tour of the hardware and the software and compare it side by side with the original Redmi Note 11 to see whether it's worth that upgrade. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So first up, what do you actually get bundled in the box? Well, there's one Redmi Note 11 Pro 5G. You got a pretty bloody beefy 67 watt fast charge adapter, USB cable, toit. You actually get screen protector chucked in there as well because there isn't one pre-installed on the Redmi Note 11 Pro. And last up as usual, Xiaomi has very generously bundled a condom case to help protect your investment. No one like loads of quick start guides and all that guff. And that right there is everything you get bundled in the box with the Redmi Note 11 Pro 5G. So first up, as you can see there, if we stick the Redmi Note 11 Pro here on the right side by side with the original Redmi Note 11 on the left, it is definitely a bigger smartphone. No dispute in that, it's a 6.67 inch versus the 6.43 inch Note 11. But besides the size increase, it is a very similar design here on the Pro model. As you can see, they're quite flat edges, similar to the iPhones. The Pro is just over 8mm thick though, so it's not exactly hugely chunky. It just feels more so because of the flat edging. And at 202 grams, it's definitely got a good heft to it as well. Not too surprising given this thing is a bit of a heifer. Thankfully, it is reasonably skinny bezels surrounding that mighty display, so it doesn't add too much extra chunk. And likewise, the rear camera doesn't jut too far from the arse end as well to add on extra bulk. Although the Note 11 Pro definitely still rattles about the place if you have it flat on your desk and you're prodding that screen. You can grab the Redmi Note 11 Pro in three different hues. You've got Polar White, Atlantic Blue or Graphite Grey. And of course, naturally, I've got the Graphite Grey model, which has to be the most boring smartphone colour of all time. I mean, seriously, does anyone on this planet look at grey and think, oh, Oh yeah, oh, I'll have me some of that. The general tedium of this colour scheme aside, it's a fairly smart and slick design there. Not a fan of all this random guff as always, but at least the branding is quite minimal. The camera chassis looks quite smart. There's nothing else really to speak of there. It is a plastic finish like pretty much all budget smartphones. I'll see how hardy it is over time because I'm going to be using it as my full-time smartphone for my in-depth review. So stay tuned to see just how scratched up it gets with uh, little care or attention. And then around front, you've got a Gorilla Glass 5 coating for that mighty display compared with the Gorilla Glass 3 on the original Redmi Note 11, so hopefully it should prove very hardy indeed. And the Redmi Note 11 Pro is even IP53 splash resistant as well, so no worries if you live here in Blighty with my good self in February where it's probably going to get drizzly on a few occasions. Now on the software side, the Redmi Note 11 Pro is basically the same experience as what you got on that Redmi Note 11. So it is MIUI 13 slathered on top of the older Android 11, no sign of an Android 12 update just yet. So if you're used to MIUI, you'll know exactly what to expect here on this Redmi smartphone. It's got more of a stock Android vibe now that we've hit version 13. You've got the likes of the app tray by default. You can drag down either your notifications bar down the left hand side of the screen, otherwise the control center on the right side, which adds a whole bunch of toggles and other features you can fast access. Of course, one of the buggers of MIUI is the fact that you've got a whole bunch of crapware pre-installed on here, your TikToks, your LinkedIn's, your Facebooks. And yes, plenty of games that 99% of people won't even touch, including Bubble Shooter and our own fan favorite, Tile Fun. The most fun you'll ever have with a bunch of tiles, or not if you happen to uninstall it straight away like I always do. Burr boy. See, every time I get a Xiaomi smartphone, I always spend about 20 or 30 minutes just uninstalling crap, basically. Good news though, on the Redmi Note 11 Pro, you do have full NFC support. Google Pay comes pre-installed by default, so you can use that for your contactless payments. And just as with the original Redmi Note 11, the Pro model has an edge-mounted fingerprint sensor built into that side power button, and once again, seems to work an absolute dream. 
And a tasty bit of face unlock action as well, if for whatever reason you can't use that fingerprint sensor, such as you've got slightly grubby mitts. And so far, no complaints on the effectiveness of it, although it won't be quite as secure as the likes of the Samsung face unlock, because it does work even when you've got a face mask on. Plenty of personalization options chucked on here as well, so you can completely tinker with the home screen, get it set up exactly how you like. You got lots of themes built into the Xiaomi smartphones as well, plenty to choose from there. Good selection of always on displays as well, plenty of analog and digital options and some weird freaky deaky shit. Unfortunately though, a bit of a misnomer because it's not really an always on display, it only actually appears for 10 seconds at a time. That can't be overridden, not even in the developer settings like it used to be, which is a bit of a bugger. No change on the storage either, you've got a choice of either 64 or 128 gigs on both the original Redmi Note 11 and this Pro model. And both of these Xiaomi blowers sport a bit of micro SD memory card expandability, so you can boost that storage by up to a terabyte, but Whereas the original Redmi Note 11 had a dedicated micro SD memory card storage slot alongside the dual SIM slot, in the case of the Redmi Note 11 Pro, that second SIM slot doubles up as the micro SD memory card slot. So you can't rock dual SIMs and a memory card. Now, one of the big differences in a very literal sense of the word between the original Redmi Note 11 and this here Pro model is that display. The 6.43 inch screen on the original Redmi Note 11 has been boosted to a 6.67 inch behemoth here on the Redmi Note 11 Pro, but it's once again AMOLED tech. So that means nice wide viewing angles, nice punchy colors as well. The Redmi Note 11 Pro's display is set to vivid mode by default, and I'm quite happy to just leave it on that because the likes of anime and animated movies from Pixar, things like that, they really leap off the screen and slap you right in the chops. Although as usual, you can temper those colors if you prefer. You can also tinker around with the color temperature and everything. On the top brightness, you'll have no trouble uh, doing whatever you want really outdoors. It counted any kind of annoying glare. Resolution remains at full HD+, plus. that's 2400 by 1080 here on the Pro, so same resolution as the standard model. That does mean that the standard screen is technically sharper, but honestly, watch content side by side on the original Note 11 and the Note 11 Pro, you won't really notice the difference. The visuals in Disney+, Plus, Netflix, whatever, looks fantastic no matter what your choice. And yeah, you do have a dinky wee pinhole cutout right there when you go full screen, but it is very, very small indeed, about as small as you could possibly get. Very impressive for a budget blower and yeah, absolutely fine. Well, the Redmi Note 11 Pro does win out when it comes to the refresh rate. As you can see, they're topping off at 120 hertz compared with 90 hertz on the original Redmi Note 11. So you can bump it up and really take advantage of those supported apps. And the Redmi Note 11 Pro, like the original model, also sports a stereo speaker setup as well. Those speakers are actually built into the edge here on the top and the bottom of the 11 Pro. So let's see if the audio quality is as good as on the original Redmi Note 11. On the top brightness levels, I had absolutely no problems with visibility, even when I had powerful studio lines beaming onto the screen or if I stepped outside. And yet, once again, super impressed with that output. It is nice and loud when you bump it up to the maximum level. So even if you're in a very noisy environment, such as a place with small children in it, for instance, then you'll have absolutely no worries hearing what is going on. And the audio quality is pretty strong on those top volumes too, certainly for a budget blower. You've also got Bluetooth 5.1 support on here if you want to get a bit of wireless audio on the go. Otherwise, a ruddy headphone jack up top. Hello, freaking Lulia. Hallelujah. So performance, and this is another area where the Redmi Note 11 Pro improves on the standard Redmi Note 11. You've got a Snapdragon 695 packed inside of this bad boy compared with the 680 in the Note 11. And I found that the performance was absolutely fine here on the Note 11 for your everyday shenanigans. But if you want that extra bit of grunt, the Pro is the way to go. Go to the six or eight gigs of RAM packed inside of this bad boy. You've also got full 5G support, which you lack in the original Redmi Note 11. And because the Snapdragon 695 is supposed to be a capable, affordable chipset, I thought, you know what, screw it. Let's really test out the Redmi Note 11 Pro 5G with a bit of Genshin Impact action. And I was pleasantly surprised. It was set to the low graphics quality by default, but on these settings, almost flawless gameplay. I only saw a couple of tiny little judders in the frame rate when things got a little bit hectic, but literally a couple of times in about a 40 minute gameplay session. So yeah, if you want to game on a strict budget, then the Redmi Note 11 Pro 5G can basically handle whatever you chuck at it. And of course you've got Xiaomi's game turbo feature as well, which can be dragged out like so at any point while you're in the middle of a game. And it's so much nicer in this latest Freshest Me UI 13 version, because for one, it's actually quite obvious what all of the different options are actually do now instead of just random icons that mean absolutely fuck 
charcoal. We've still got all the classic options in there, including the ability to record your mad skills if you're liking, clear up the memory if you find that your game is struggling for whatever reason. And of course, you got that classic timeless voice changer feature. So I can actually sound like a really manly man. And if you do want to get gaming for hours and hours at a time, well, the good news is that Snapdragon 695 seems pretty energy efficient. You do have liquid coolant tech built into this thing as well, so it doesn't even begin to heat up, nor throttling whatsoever. As for your battery tech, well, it's once again a 5,000 milliamp capacity cell crammed inside of the Pro model, just like the original Redmi Note 11. And that should last you all day long, no worries, unless you're going to be doing a lot of Genshin impact. And even if you do, hey, at least you've got that 67 watt wired charging support. So that'll power this thing back up again in an absolute jiffy. And if you want to know more about the battery life here on the Redmi Note 11 Pro 5G, well, just stay tuned for my in-depth review. I'll be using this as my full-time smartphone for about a week or so, testing out its great, see how good it does. So let's finish up this Redmi Note 11 Pro unboxing and tour with a squint at the camera tech. And what you've got on the Pro model is a 108 megapixel primary sensor uses that Samsung HM2 sensor technology. That's in comparison to the bog standard 50 megapixel effort here on the original Redmi Note 11. But Xiaomi's actual camera app hasn't changed up at all for this Pro model. Once again, you've got bugger loads of different toggles and features, loads of different camera modes, including a full on Pro mode. If you want to manually tweak the ISO levels, the shutter speed, the white balance, etc. You can boost up to the maximum 108 megapixel resolution in the Pro mode as well. Otherwise, you're shooting nine in one pixel binning, so it's 12 megapixel resolution shots. And I've got to say, just from a few hours of play, this is looking like one of the beefiest budget camera phones around. That 108 megapixel primary sensor can churn out some good looking shots. But of course, stay tuned for my in-depth Redmi Note 11 Pro review for my full thoughts on that bad boy. And also like the original Redmi Note 11, you do have an eight megapixel ultra wide angle shooter you can swap to at any point. And yes, there is a basic bog standard two megapixel super macro lens as well. And if you're into your home movies, well, you can capture full HD footage at 30 frames per second. Sadly, no 4K option on there, which is a bit of a surprise. And again, I'll be shooting plenty of video with this thing over the coming days to so stay tuned for my in-depth review. And then around the front of the Redmi Note 11 Pro, you have a 16 megapixel cell selfie shooter this time versus the 13 megapixel selfie snapper on the original Redmi Note 11 with an HDR option if you like. And I'll certainly be taking that for a test drive because you know I absolutely adore shooting selfies. Can you see? Can you see the excitement in my eyes? So there you have it kiddies. That in a nutshell is the fresh new Xiaomi Redmi Note 11 Pro. 5G fully unboxed and tour with a bit of side by side action with the bog standards Note 11 as well. But as I say, my sim is going straight into this morpho right here. So stay tuned. About a week's time, my full in depth review should be going up on Techspert. In the meantime, it'll be great to hear your thoughts on this wee blow. Any questions you have and any comparisons you would like to see, definitely let me know in the comments below and I will try my very best to make it happen. The time is kind of crazy short with MWC lingering on the horizon like a lingering thing. For more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell and have yourselves a bloody wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.